of guys like punching each other, there's a lot of blood. I mean, I don't know, broken bones and things like that. I thought it was actually going to be more violent than what we saw. I think it's actually a very helpful and constructive sport. I'd say so, yeah. I've not really seen non-violence in MMA. I think MMA isn't as violent as it seems. I believe it's quite well regulated. I've got a friend who does MMA and they seem to be very respectful of each other. Like There's a lot of sportsmanship in that sport. There is violent because it's a violent sport. No, not really. I think all the people who do it are professionally trained so they know that they're not going to injure the other player too much. So, no. A basic structure for their striking. It's very, very similar to, say, a kickboxing style. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the, the wrestling aspect is a place, uh, basically you've got to try and put a skeleton down of each individual area, and that is the striking, the wrestling, and then the groundwork. I set up like a scissor position, but I don't really want the sweep. Okay, so I'm here, I put my feet to the floor, I've got head and arm, I shrink my hips out. It's going to look like I'm going to go for the scissor, but I'm going to put the foot up on the hip. So they're putting it down here, I'm going to sneak it up onto the hip. So it's always the threat there, that I could touch it and feel it out a little bit to try and get a response if I wish. But I've got to put that foot up on the hip with my heel. I'm going to put my knee on the inside of that arm and I'm going to kick my leg up and round. And then when I do so, I'm going to hold my shin. So this is the strike guard that we're familiar with. We drilled this a lot from just a closed guard. You know, I wanted to be confident and learn self-defense, but I wanted to do something with my brother. My brother was four years older and uh, we were young, young adults and we wanted to do something that we could do together. So we went along to a karate school and a taekwondo school. Uh, we liked the look of the taekwondo because of its kicks. And uh, we started training. And I had some good years doing the taekwondo. four to five times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd have two or three rest days, depending on how I felt on that given week. And you'd train uh, twice a day. You'd mm -hmm. normally stick a run in during the daytime, if time permitted, and then you'd do your technical training and sparring in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, I competed heavily in Taekwondo, obviously. That's my first martial art I did. I've done sport jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done no-gi grappling tournaments. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu grappling tournaments, uh, obviously extensively in the MMA. Definitely agree. That was a nice cut open there as well. And Mark stopping the fight. And probably got the ducks as well. Uh, Thai boxing, I fought Thai boxing as well all over the world. complete fighters. I'm going to say complete fighters. He's a true MMAist in that he could strike at world class level, he could wrestle and he can also handle himself on the ground. So he was a real complete fighter. Whereas back in the early day, it was a case of sometimes uh, a wrestler just having his wrestling skills, a jiu-jitsu guy just having his ground skill, skills, uh, and a striker just having his striking skills. This guy was a full package. Um, so he stood out. And, you know, and there's a little soft spot for Hicks and Gracie. You know, he is perhaps not as a uh, complete fighter as you get today, mm -hmm. or as someone like perhaps Michael Lewis was, but he was a ground specialist who, who never lost. Mm -hmm. So he sort of stands as a living legend that never lost his name because he was undefeated. Um, well, I suppose, you know, it could have been anything that you go into at the end of the day. You know, it could have been a restaurant and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, my interest is in the martial arts and, and gym side of things so you know I did something that was interesting I wouldn't want to go into making dolls or dolls houses because I don't have no interest in it uh, it's just what I'm, I'm into <laughs> The Academy uh, is really something that we want to give back to community um, and when I say that what I mean is when these young lads come in um, and we see some talent in them you know we'll give them all the backing that they need to, to get where they got to get. Um, for a lot of people, you know, they'll get stumped on the fact that they can't afford to get all the equipment that they needed, they can't afford to have you know, the time to train. Um, so once we see that there's a talent in, in, in an individual, we'll uh, give them all the backing that they need in terms of equipment, uh, 
in terms of we'll um, sponsor them so they won't have to pay for their training so they actually get free training and really give them you know proper proper complete backing and also I like to think this academy offers everything regards in the terms of um, different varied martial artists uh, in, in our coaching we've got top coaches from so many different disciplines and they all really get on well under one roof which I think is quite an unusual thing initially there's no clickiness it just seems to work here um, so you know, we offer a wide variety um, and, and really open-minded to each other's styles and systems so anyone that comes in they quite often have, have a taste of all the different martial arts that we've got on offer but not only that we've got a really good gym here as well for the weights and fitness and also good coaches in that as well um, yeah, so really, it's, a, it's the fact that you know, in the local community, I think that for the price that we, um, you know, we, we offer our services, it's something that's open to everyone of any walk of life. It, it's affordable for anyone. And for those that it still is unfortunately not affordable to, it, there's still an opportunity to, to progress and achieve here. I think um, always have an open mind. Uh, don't don't just close yourself off to what you're learning in, in that individual session. You know, you should, as an MMAs, you need to look at all different martial arts and, uh, and just enjoy it. Really, I mean, there's absolutely no point in doing it if you don't enjoy it. Some people put a lot of pressure on themselves, so they come on their first session saying, "I want to be a pro fighter," and they go balls out into to crazy hard training when they don't really know what they're doing. Um, just take stage by stage, step by step, and enjoy it, and, and keep that open mind. Now I know actually that mixed martial arts is actually not violent one bit. It's actually quite safe. It's actually quite constructed well, and it's actually a very good sport to get involved in. Because I even wanted to get involved myself. Um, yeah, I think it has because I thought it used to be really violent and all that, but actually I've realised it's got quite a lot of skill, and there's quite a lot of like technical stuff that I didn't realise happened when it comes to mixed martial arts. Like it's more about speed, not strength, which is something I had no idea about. So I wanted to stop when I was at the top, at the top, but at just the right time, and um, and you know to, when people ask me, you know, how, how do I feel about that now? I feel I feel in a good place. I think I stopped right at the right time because I'm not hurt. Um, I didn't start like losing loads of fights in a row because I was just too old. Um, you know, I, I won maintaining my titles, which was you know really meant a lot to me. But I get to relive it through my students because these young lads are coming up. You know, I can remember how I felt when they was at their stage they're at. So not only can I give them experience. Uh, and let them know that they're not alone with what they're going through because I've been there and done it. I get to relive all the excitement of what it's like to steadily achieve, to coax them through and get them through the times when it gets hard and you, you know, experience defeat. Um, so yeah, I get to really relive it time and time again. And uh, I still love it.